Hello everyone, as you can tell I'm back and I'm now a mum. So if you haven't seen the birth vlog, go check it out, I'll link it below. But I thought I'd come in on here and explain like my birth story. I was watching loads of these before I gave birth because first time mum, didn't know what to expect. I was expecting to do it the natural way and it just didn't go to plan. But it was all positive, everything was positive in the end. Um, but I thought I'd walk you through my experience and yeah, in the UK, I ended up having him at 37 weeks plus three days. He is in here. So I'm trying to be semi-quiet because, you know, baby sleeping. But I'm sh I will show you him officially at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. But I thought I'd walk you through. I've got my notes so I remember the dates and stuff. And while it's fresh in my mind, I thought I'd share my journey and hope this helps anyone feeling like a little bit anxious. Um, if you've got a C-section planned or not planned, like you literally can't, I feel like with your birth, you can't plan anything. Like just go in it with an open mind because nothing goes to plan. Some people it does, but mine it didn't. Um, and you don't know what can happen. So let me start with the 22nd of June. So on the 22nd of June, I started having Braxton Hicks, but at the time, first time mum, I didn't know what contractions felt like. I thought this could be contractions. So I went up to triage, um, which is basically the emergency bit of the birth thing to be seen. And they put me on the monitor and everything to monitor the baby and yeah we were having Braxton Hicks basically but I ended up staying in the hospital for two nights because my blood pressure was high um so while I was in hospital for the two nights I overheard the person next to me she was 37 weeks being induced because they couldn't get her blood pressure down so in my head I thought oh god this could be me let alone two weeks later or a month later basically was it two weeks later it was me but um i was sitting there thinking oh my god this could be me but just so you know they try and hold off inducing until the 37 week mark at this point i was 35 weeks so they didn't want to induce me and i hadn't been on any blood pressure medication at that point so they put me on blood pressure medication medication i was on nifedipine um i still am they're weaning me off my blood pressure now two weeks on has gone back to normal so i'm weaning off them um but yeah we had braxton hicks went to triage stayed for two nights because of my blood pressure and then i was discharged on the 25th of june so that was a big scare in itself, wasn't expecting to stay in. That's when we were like, right, we need to get our hospital bag ready because this baby can come any time now. His due date was the 23rd of July. So literally a couple of days after you watching this video, he would have been due, which is so weird. And he's been with us now for like three weeks. Um, so fast forward a bit to a couple of weeks later, the 3rd of July, I went for my 37 week scan. I think at this point I was 37 weeks and one day. So went in there thinking, oh, nothing can go wrong. It's just a scan, like nothing's gonna happen today. If it was my blood pressure, like they're not monitoring that. So should be fine. I was wrong. So baby was measuring a small in this scan. They thought he was four pounds seven which is small. And they also predicted that I had developed preeclampsia at this point. I don't really know what preeclampsia is, but I'll put maybe a definition on screen now so you can read it. Um, but I had developed that, but basically my placenta stopped working. They thought because he was measuring small, so he wasn't getting enough food, which means they wanted him basically out ASAP. So I was then sent up to, so our local hospital is Ashford Hospital and St. Peter's and they're connected, but St. Peter's is in Chertsey. 
and that's where you deliver your baby um because they don't do it at ashford anymore but we went up to saint peter's hospital and basically said that they're gonna induce me bear in mind charlie was my other half wasn't even here at this point he was going to a gig that night to see acdc and i said i don't think anything's gonna happen tonight to be honest because from experience being in there two weeks ago it took a while for people to be induced and when they are induced it takes it can take up to three days for the baby to arrive so i had that mindset and lo and behold i didn't obviously didn't have the baby that day but we were waiting around my mum came up sorry i just getting a phone call that i don't know who it is so i just blocked that um but <clears throat> What was I saying? So yeah, my mum came up that day. You could see on the birth vlog and we kind of just was waiting around that day. That was the Wednesday. They doctor came and told me the options. So they recommended, because baby was small, a balloon, which is a style of induction. I think it's like a mini water balloon that they put up you to stretch your cervix. And when once it's dilated, the balloon will fall out and basically you're ready to go basically they didn't want to give me um hormones because of baby's weight um i was dubious about this because i didn't really know what was best the options were that or a c-section at the time they didn't really explain what they would do because obviously i'm a first time mum baby's measuring small i want everyone to be okay i was a bit on the fence and what to do what's the best for me and baby so that was all in my mind nothing happened on that wednesday so the 4th of july came round again had all the monitors like baby monitoring etc but the doctor then came round in the ward because i stayed overnight um to explain the options a bit better um i wasn't going to be induced that day anyway because it was so busy in labor ward that they couldn't put me up but basically she was she was really good at explaining like the risks and stuff and that's when i decided okay i think a c-section is best because anything can go wrong with the induction and then you would end up having to have an emergency c-section anyway so i just thought to avoid that i don't want to be at risk i don't want my baby to be at risk let's just do it the safe way safest way <laughs> so that was then planned for the friday we were having a baby on the Friday. Obviously, that was very overwhelming. I did have a little cry because I was like, I don't know what to expect. Um, and I'm kind of glad that I didn't have it planned because I would be thinking about it, especially being my first time. But I was thinking about that over the night. Um, that's when, yeah, so that's when we decided about the C-section. So it was just a waiting game that day. So we went out for walks around the... Um, hospital went to get food you would have seen if you watched the birth vlog us finding out this news by the way i was absolutely shattered at this point being in hospital i don't know if anyone's ever stayed overnight in hospital but they wake you up so often i was just so tired and bearing in mind this was only thursday i ended up staying in hospital till the monday um but we'll get on to that so yeah thursday rolled around fine then friday it was the day for the c-section the 5th of july so i was luckily first up into the surgery room so charlie was so charlie couldn't stay overnight because of like the labor ward you can only come at visiting times it was like nine till nine at night i think from memory so he came for nine however i was moved up to labor ward so i was in um the antenatal ward I was moved up to labour ward um, at nine and he was just get arriving. So he was a bit flustered and I was like, I'm not going to go in without you, da da da. Because little, little, little did we know, it took us about an hour to get actually into theatre. So I went up to labour ward at nine, had medication the night before, couldn't eat anything the night before. And then, yeah, so had that the anaesthetist then came at about 9 30 10 to talk through the risks this is when to be honest i was a bit nervous because 
you kind of know the risks anyway, but when they say like one in a hundred thousand could be paralyzed, that's when I was like, oh my God, what, what if that one is me? But I think they just have to say it because of like the terms and conditions, like the anaesthetist said that it's never happened. So don't make it happen now. So it was reassuring. But once I got into the theatre room, so we went up and we went into theatre at 10 or 10.30. Um, and that's when like they put an injection in your back. And that's when I was a bit like they were obviously sanitising everything first. And that's when you're just sitting there waiting. You can see your name on the board and everything. It's just very surreal. I had a little bit of a cry because I was nervous then, um, mainly because of that. And But the anaesthetist was really good. Like once he put it in my back, the anaesthetic, it comes right up to your chest, like up the top here. So you can't feel anything. You can feel, like you can still feel, but you can't move. Um, so you could feel like when baby came out, you can feel them and there's a lot of like tugging and pulling. You can feel all that, but you can't feel like any pain or anything like that. Um, so they put the injection in my back. I don't know what the injection is called, but it's in your back and they put like cooling cream on your back beforehand to kind of numb it. Didn't, that didn't hurt at all. Didn't feel anything. Um, I was just nervous about the effects of it basically. Then they lay you down, they put a catheter in, and then they start basically your C-section. And at 11.27 that day, CJ came out. He literally came out like the Lion King. All I saw, cause we didn't know the gender, was his little, little boy parts. <laughs> so we knew he was a boy and that was it. We were like made up basically. I did a bit of chest, um, skin to skin, but I couldn't do too much because where the shield is, they were like doing stuff and baby was getting in the way. So Charlie actually held him a bit more than me for skin to skin. And yeah, he was born. So after that, we came back. It took the whole surgery, I'd say, took about an hour and a half. The heart, the quickest part was getting him out. He cried, everything went smoothly, because I was also worried about that. Um, he was fine. He was ended up being five pounds seven, which is good, way above what they predicted, because I was really nervous about his him being so small. But he was all good, I was all good. And then, yeah, it took about an hour and a half, the whole surgery. The quickest part is getting him out. The longest part was stitching me back up. And then what I would say recovery wise, so we went, back to the labour ward we were in labour ward literally for pretty much the rest of the day and then ended up we had visitors then so in the afternoon we decided on his name literally just after theatre kind of in between and then we had a bit of time obviously to get to know him we we like fed him obviously and burped him just getting to know like new motherhood and parenthood and then we had visitors up from the afternoon to so like two o'clock. So we had a bit of time to ourselves before we got allowed guests up. And then they had to obviously go, they went about five, I'd say, five or six. And then, no, I lie, they went about seven. And then we were just hanging around. We ordered a cockerel, which is a fast food place, bought dinner and then I was actually then sent down to the antenatal ward or no, it's not antenatal, it's the postnatal ward um, to recover. But Charlie had to go home because of the nine till nine hours. So I was left there overnight with little CJ and it was just me and him riding solo. Bearing in mind, I had the feeling in my legs came back by probably like one. I couldn't still move because I had a catheter in. The catheter stays in overnight and then they take it out in the morning, which is a bliss for us because you could just literally sit there peeing um, <laughs> and you can feel your legs again. So you kind of feel normal again, pretty much. But the next day you can't, like you're really sore, swollen. You're on, I was given nicodamine, I think that's what it's called, a really high painkiller. But I could walk the next day like fine. It was just slow, like zombie mode. 
and that took about I'd say four days for me to like walk normally but not walk normally so I was walking normally but very 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 slowly because it also affects like I think where the um where the what do you call it <laughs> where the numbing stuff goes in I can't remember I can't think what it's called um that affects like your chest and like obviously whatever they've done inside affects like your breathing and stuff which I didn't realize and like after I walked around the block and I literally was just like my heart rate went to like 150 like I was like is this normal but it is because I ended up losing a liter of blood within my surgery which is a little bit higher than normal I didn't end up having a um blood transfusion luckily but yeah so that happened um but afterwards I'd say recovery wise for me it's been okay like we had CJ on the 5th the 6th 7th and 8th I was in hospital bearing in mind the hardest part for me was just being so tired because I couldn't sleep at all literally couldn't sleep because everyone comes in babies are crying people are talking I just didn't get any sleep and that was the hardest part for me to be honest in hospital being in there so long and my blood pressure wouldn't come down because of the tiredness and then my pulse went up because I think my body was working overtime to just keep me going because I was so tired but on the Monday I came back slept and then I was pretty much fine so I would say it took me about four days to properly like walk slowly like really really slowly obviously I could walk to my car it was sore took to painkillers take the painkillers as much as you can because they do really help they do kind of make you constipate though that's the only thing I would say um the scary part after c-section is going for a poo to be fair because you don't want to squeeze and it's all that area no in your tummy like um also the next day after which I forgot to mention I did get contractions so my belly was shrinking so I got contractions the next day which to be honest are basically like Braxton Hicks if you've had Braxton Hicks you'll know and the way I described Braxton Hicks was if you do um if you do um sit-ups when your belly contracts when you do that that's the way that's basically what it feels like and obviously contractions probably get intenser I didn't get to experience that because of the birth I had but that's what I'm assuming um but that's the way I can describe it is like when you release your like sit up that's it going down and then when you crunch back up that's the contraction so that's how it feels like because no one ever really explained what a contraction felt like everyone was like you just know you'll just know and it's the same with like Braxton Hicks like they didn't say what real contractions felt like and it's just like you'll just know and I'm like yeah but what if I don't know <laughs> so anyway so that all happened and yeah two weeks later here I am with a little boy and I'm feeling fine you can't see the scar really I don't know if this is because I've got a little bit of a belly but I can't see it I haven't been able to see it yet my belly is slightly swollen still you can't you won't be able to see it on camera um slightly swollen at the bottom and it can take up to six weeks for it to go down so the whole recovery from a c-section is six weeks so i can't drive for six weeks i can't lift um can't bend down too much i'm definitely bending down a lot more now but i can't bend down too much to help recovery walk and pelvic floors they're really good um so i've been trying to incorporate that because i want to recover quickly and then yeah i can't bath for six weeks shower just let it rinse on you like don't dab it and wash that area um just let it air dry basically and then use kind of like sanex no fragrance so that's basically my birth story vlog i would recommend a c-section i know i haven't experienced anything else but i'd recommend it like it was easy baby was fine i was fine like it's a little bit scary the recovery might be a little bit longer i'm not sure 
but yeah, it was worth it. I would do it again, basically. I would, I would have a C-section again. Maybe a planned one next time if we have baby number two, but C-section is definitely a good option to go if you're especially nervous about pushing, which I was. Um, just because no one knows what it's going to feel like or what to expect. And a C-section is just an off at the end of the day. So you kind of know, like, you're not going to feel anything. Like, there's not really any pain. It's uncomfortable after um, because of the painkillers. Like, you're in pain a little bit, but the painkillers basically take that pain away. Um, and you're walking around the hospital probably for a couple of days like a zombie, to be honest. Um, that's the only way I can describe it. But after a week for me, I was feeling a lot like a back to normal ish it's just the walking you can't walk far um you'll know when you can walk a bit further because your breathing gets better so now two weeks on i can walk around my block pretty much at a semi-normal pace whereas before so it takes me to walk around my block about half an hour whereas just after the c-section it literally took me about an hour to get round it once and bear in mind my block is tiny like it should take from 20 to 30 minutes like so just pace yourself take it easy if you are going to go down that route and yeah that's my birth story so this is my little boy cj say hello everyone he is tiny he is wide awake and just about to go to sleep because we just fed him but i thought i'd show you him on the channel say hi yeah he's going to sleep it's so hot in here today that he is literally boiling but he is called charlie jack palmiter if you haven't seen the birth vlog cj for short so charlie is my husband's name and yeah he's he's not actually he's not a double depth Blah, blah. it's not a double barrel name his name is just charlie but we're calling him a cj because story behind it i wanted to cj as in the name itself like c-e-e-j-a-y but we thought it sounded more like a nickname so on his birth certificate it's going to be charlie jack palmiter and then mummy and daddy are going to call him cj for his little nickname but he's content he's asleep and yeah He's excited to be on the channel a lot more, aren't you, mate? You're excited to be on Mummy's YouTube channel, making all the memories. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next video will be a week in the life of having a newborn, our first week at home. And yeah, he's two weeks today, which is insane. I am filming today as well, because this is our like first week, full week back at home as new parents. So far, it's so good. I'm a bit nervous about Charlie going back to work, but we shall see. But anyway, that's for another video. If you're a new mum or mum-to-be, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to make some new mum friends and have you be a part of the family because it, and it helps me out. So do subscribe, like, if you like this video and yeah i'll see you in my next one if you're new i normally film thursday normally upload thursday and sunday and come along this mum new mum journey with me and yeah i'll see you in my next one have a lovely weekend enjoy it the weather is supposed to be nice in the uk so make the most of it i'm sitting here friday filming and it's boiling it's like one of the hottest days but I will let you, I'll love you and leave you. And yeah, see you in my next one. Bye.